Hey there, my fellow designers and creators. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another video in this mini series on advanced prototyping. This is the fifth video. And if you haven't watched the previous four videos, make sure to watch all of them. All of them are super important. All of these videos combined is this one prototype. So this is the last part of the prototype. So let me show you what we're gonna be creating in this one. So it's pretty simple. It's the countdown timer. So I can tap here, enter a random phone number and uh, we transition on to the OTP screen. And over here, what we see is we're gonna transition over here, basically do this countdown from 10 seconds to zero seconds. And this 10 can be anything, right? I'm not gonna have 10 variations. I'm not going to prototype each of the instances. Any number you decide, it can be 100 seconds, it can be 500 seconds, it can be one hour, whatever it is, you can go ahead and it's going to automatically count down. You just have to define what is the duration and it's going to do that automatically, right? And then after it hits zero seconds, it's going to change to reset code. You can click on it again and then it resets the entire cycle all over again, right? So this is the countdown timer that we're going to be creating in this video. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now, here is wh where we left off in the previous video. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, you know, um, animate this. Now, before we go ahead and do anything, let's actually understand how this is working. Let's take a simple example of a single, you know, text layer with just one number, and then let's animate that and prototype that, and then let's see how that works, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and press F on my keyboard and create like a big frame. Uh, I'm gonna press T and then enter like a digit, let's say like five, for example, and uh, probably gonna set this to um, 200, whatever, uh, just a really big number, right? And what we want to do is to understand what is happening in the background. Now, obviously, this countdown happens automatically. We do not trigger it. It just starts counting down automatically when it appears on the right screen, right? So when the right screen appears, right? So which means that if we were to go to prototype and we want to obviously, you know, ch change the trigger, we can't choose after delay because after delay is the only thing that we can choose in order to go ahead and sort of, you know, keep animating it uh, automatically, right? All of these are triggers that the user has to perform. But in this case, we don't want the user to perform any trigger. It just starts counting down on its own, right? So it looks like we can't go ahead and add a delay over here. Now, one of the options we have is if I make this into a component, maybe that works. So let's check that out. So I've made it into a component now, as you can see, it's a component. I can come here to interactions and over here also looks like I can't do anything, okay? So maybe another option is to obviously go ahead and add a variant, so let's add a variant, okay? And then now let's select one of them. And now when we come over here to the click, uh, let's actually remove uh, anything over here so we don't need anything over here, yes, uh, okay? And I'm gonna start again from fresh, click on interactions, and over here I can now finally choose after delay, right? So this is the only way for us to, you know, add an after delay interaction. Why is it like this? I have absolutely no idea, but it doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and choose that. Now, the first thing is to understand is when do we want this animation to happen, right? Now, when you're starting, let's say from five, all right? And when you go to five to four, there is a one second gap between going from five to four, right? Because when there are five seconds left, you have to complete one second in order to show the number four. So which means that we're going to say, 100, sorry, 1000 milliseconds, which is equal to one second, is when the animation will happen, which means that from five, after 1000 milliseconds, we are going to change it to four, all right? So that's why I'm choosing 1000 milliseconds. Now, after 1000 milliseconds, what should we do? What is supposed to happen, right? Now, this number, which is actually a unit of measurement, which is five, which is five seconds, we're actually going to subtract one from it right? So it's going to be five minus one, which is going to be four. And then it's going to be four minus one, which is going to be three. And then it's going to be three minus one, which is going to be equal to two, right? So what that means is we need to set a variable for the five. And of course, we need to pick a variable. Now we don't really have a variable. So let's go ahead and create it. So if I come here to the variable section, I'm going to create a new collection. I'm going to call this timer or countdown or whatever it is. And I'm going to choose a number variable. Now, the reason I'm choosing a number variable is because we're going to perform mathematical operations on it. You can't perform mathematical operations on a text layer, right? You can't say ABC minus one, right? But you can say 10 minus one, right? So because we are going to be using mathematical operations, we want to go ahead and choose the number variable, okay? And another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and copy this default value text state, whatever that is. We're going to come out here and I'm going to paste that over here, okay? Now, what... You can choose whatever number you really want, right? I'm gonna choose, uh, let's say I'm gonna choose six for now, okay? And you can change this to 10 a little bit later. So I'm gonna set this to six. 
Now, once I do that, we obviously have to assign it over here. Now we're going to assign it to this one. So I'm going to come over here and here instead of five, I'm going to choose a uh, time. Oh, actually we didn't even give the variable a name. So I'm going to go ahead and call this time. Okay. Or call this seconds, right? Maybe that's better. Okay. Six seconds. So come over here, click on this and we're going to change this to um, six seconds, right? So now as you can see, it changes to six seconds. This is perfect. So now we can go ahead and add the interaction. So let's try to do it. So I'm going to click on this again. I'm going to click on the main component. Okay. Come down here to prototype, right? So after 1000 seconds, we want to set a variable, which is basically the time. Okay. Uh, sorry, seconds, right? Now this is going to be seconds. Click on seconds. So we are going to change this, right? So this is the from, and then now we are going to set the two. So from six, right? Or in this case, from whatever number it is, it can be 1 million as well. I don't care. Whatever it is, just take that number and then subtract one from it. So I'm going to say whatever this is, change that from this value to the same value, but minus one from it, right? That, that's all, right? And as you can see over here, you have multiple operations that you can perform. So I'm going to click on subtraction and then I'm going to say one, okay? So now after one second, you can see that it is going to change from whatever number it is, it is going to take that number and then subtract one from that number. Okay, so let's see if this works. I'm gonna click, uh, click here and then press the shift spacebar and let's move this out. Okay, now we don't see anything happening. Now sometimes this plays really weird. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and make an instance of this, put it outside and then now let's play this again. Okay, and now you can see it works. Okay, but as you can see, it just did it once. We want it to loop, right? Because if we look at the interaction that we set over here, all we're saying is just take it and reduce it to minus one. That's it. This is a one time operation. It's not happening again and again and again. So now how do we go ahead and loop this, right? Because we have to find a way to come to, to go from this particular state and back again to this state. And then when we come back and do that loop, we'll then be able to perform this operation again. So what we're going to do, we're going to use this as our looping intermediary. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just select this and give them proper names so that it's easy to understand. I'm going to click on this or uh, click here. I'm going to say state. This one is going to be called start and this one is going to be called end. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, come here to prototype and we're going to do two things. The first thing, is obviously reduce it to one. And after you reduce it to one, change the state to this state. Okay. So that we can then loop back again to this state. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and add another one. And this time I'm going to choose change to, okay. We're basically going to change to the state, which state from start, we are going to change that to the end state, which is basically this. And we want you to do it instantly, right? No dissolve, no smart anime, just immediately once you reduce the number, just go ahead and quickly change it to end. Okay. So now we changed it to this state, right? Now, after it becomes five, it's, it's going to come over here. Okay. And from here, we want to come back again to the main state. So for this, I'm going to add a uh, um, noodle over here. And then we don't want it to do on click. We want to everything to happen automatically. So we're going to set after delay. We're going to set one millisecond because you can't set zero milliseconds. One is the lowest you can go. So you click on that and then you change it to which state the start state and we want it to be instant. Okay. So now let's see how this works. So let's test this out. I'm going to click over here and shift spacebar, and then let's see how that works. And as you can see, now it's working perfectly, but we have two problems. The first problem is that now it's going into negative numbers and you can also see that it's doing this sort of a weird thing, right? Because what's actually happening, it is a transitioning from this number to five, and then coming back over here. We don't really want that. Now, the reason that's happening is because here we have applied the um, variable of second and we need to apply the same thing over here as well. So from five, I'm going to change that to um, seconds and apply the same thing over here. And now it should work, right? So now let's check it out. So six, five, four, three, two, one, zero and then minus one, minus two again. So we solved the problem of that glitching five, but now we want to make sure that it stops doing this if the value is zero, right? So, which means that we need to use an if conditional statement. So let's understand, it should be very simple. So 
The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna collapse all of this and we're gonna add an conditional statement. Now, what is the conditional statement? Now, if the seconds is greater than zero, all right? Now you can choose anything. You can say not equal to zero, or if you say it is greater than zero, whatever it is, right? So let's say if we say, if this value, okay, is, which is basically the seconds, if the value of seconds is greater than zero, okay, is greater than, oh, sorry, we want to say greater than zero, okay, then we want you to perform these actions. So if it is six, I want you to reduce it by minus one. If it is one, I want you to reduce it by minus one, which becomes zero. But if it is zero, don't do anything, right? Because if it is zero, we don't want you to do anything. So, so if we choose greater than, we can take this, bring that down inside, and then bring this one also, because this is the whole thing that's going to loop the entire thing, okay? So now let's test it out. So we're gonna get five, four, three, two, one, zero, and there it stops, perfect. So this is working exactly well for us, right? Amazing. So now what you wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just grab this uh, thing over here, paste that over here, and let's actually go ahead and put it into this, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is just, you know, uh, option command C, option command V, and V, and then uh, we can just press auto layout to auto layout all of this, all right? Um, this is fine. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna start it at six and we're gonna change it to 10 uh, later once we have the entire thing set up, okay? So this is fine. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a, uh, take that copy over here that you see over here, all right? And I'm just gonna drag that, oops, not prototype it. We wanna drag it inside over here, okay? Uh, let me just add a quick background a little bit so that we can see what we're dealing with, okay? And yes, so another thing that I'm gonna do is here, I'm going to copy this and put in the letter S over here as well, all right? So that it's a little bit easier for us. So, so this, because it's an auto layout, I can quickly organize all of this and I'm gonna make this S and then copy that paste over here and then just copy all the, I'm just doing basic auto layout stuff. So nothing too fancy. Okay, there we go. So, so now we have this and let's, let's test this and make sure that it's working perfectly. So I'm gonna click on the frame, uh, shift space bar, okay? Uh, oh, it, 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 it seems to be like super small. Let me see if I can increase this as much as I can. So let me restart that again. Uh, so as you can see, it's five, four, three, two, one, zero, and perfect. Okay, so this, is, seems, this seems to be working. Now, what we actually want to do is when it hits zero, we want to have um, the state change to this, right? What is the state change? Uh, we wanted to change it to this where it says resend code, right? Obviously, when it hits zero, we want it to resend code. So I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna come over here, and I'm going to paste that over here, okay? Now, because we're going to change states over here, obviously, we want to go ahead and make this into variants, or components in this case, right? So I'm gonna select uh, this, let's make that into a component, okay? And uh, make this also into a component, or in fact, we can just do it in many ways. I'm just gonna add a variant, and then copy this, and paste it over here. And we don't need this anymore, so I'm gonna delete this, and we don't need the backgrounds as well. Maybe I'm gonna add a slight background to the whole component box so that we can sort of see what we're dealing with. Yeah, there we go, okay. So um, also what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and because we're going to be changing the state, so this is more of a disabled state and this is more of an active state. So what I will do is I'm gonna come over here in the properties, I'm going to say interactive. Okay, which basically means this is still active, but this is not interactable. However, this is interactable, which means I can tap on it. So when I come over here for this one, I'm going to say true uh, false. Okay, and for this, I'm going to come here and say true. Okay, now let's quickly check if this is working. I'm going to go ahead and maybe just reduce the size of this. Okay, and uh, space bar, and then let's increase this. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one zero and yes, it is working perfectly. In fact, I can even make a, make a variant of this and bring this outside, okay? Uh, and we can add a gap of two pixel padding there, okay? Perfect, let's test it out again. So five, four, three, two, one, zero, and yes, perfect. So now we need to change it from this state to this state when it hits zero, okay? 
So we want to do that everything. We want to do all of that over here, right? Because this is where we're adding the condition. So let's understand again. So if the value is greater than zero, then do this. Okay. But if it is not, all right, which means that if it is zero or less than zero, okay, I want you to change the state of this component from this state to this state. Okay. Now, in order to do that, we need to set up variables for this, right? We need to set up a variable state for this. So I'm going to come down over here and go to prototype. Uh, not actually prototype. Come here to variables, add a variable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a string. This is going to be helper text. Okay. And actually, in fact, I'm not even going to choose a string. I'm actually going to choose a Boolean property because we are using a switch, right? For true and false. So uh, I'm going to choose, call this helper text. And we know that the default value is going to be false, right? The default value is going to be false. We're going to start off in this state. Okay. So now all we have to do is we want to select this and uh, apply that variable. But of course we can't do it in the master component. So we have to do it in the instance. So over here, instead of having the switch over here, I'm going to apply the Boolean property called helper text. And uh, that is going to define whether this is going to be switched on or switched off. Okay. Perfect. So. Now, what that means is if I can come over here, come here to prototype and define this. So if the number is greater than zero, then reduce it by one. If it is not greater than zero, which means if it is equal to zero or less than zero, I want you to do another set of actions, which is basically what set variable of what? Of the helper text, okay? Whatever state it is in, doesn't matter if it is in true state, it doesn't matter if it is in false state, I don't care, right? Whatever state it is in, take that and set that to true. Okay. If it is not e if it is not greater than zero, then you set that to true. Okay. So now let's see if this works. Okay. So let's go ahead and play this. Okay. So five, four, three, two, one, zero, and it should change to this, right? Amazing. Works perfectly well. Great. Now, the next thing is that when I click on this recent code, I want it to actually change back to this state, right? And I want the countdown to start all over again, right? So when I click on this, it needs to restart and then start all over again, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click on this, okay? And here I can add an interaction where I'm going to say on click, what do I want to do? I want to change the state of that, okay? Change to the non-interactive state, right? So change it from this state to the non-interactive state and do it instantly. I want it to instantly change, okay? So let's test that out and see if it works, okay? So, so five, four, three, two, one, zero, changes the state and I click over here and then it changes back all over again. Now, if you see over here, the problem is that we didn't reset the number, right? The number is still at zero value right? So we need to go ahead and reset that to the original number. Okay. So what do we do? Now, if you see over here, uh, or maybe click on this and choose the prototype on click, we want it to change the state, right? But we also want to reset the seconds. So I'm going to click over here, set variable of what? Of the time or actually seconds in this case, right? Now in this case, at this particular point, when we are arriving on this state, right? So maybe if I were to explain this a little bit better, so let me just uh, open this up and explain this in a, in a better way. Okay. Um, so here at this particular state, the seconds, as you can see is zero, it's zero seconds. So when I come over here and I'm trying to set the variable, okay, the current value or the, the value at this particular point in time, when I'm about to click on this is zero seconds. So I need to change it back from zero seconds to six seconds. Okay. Now the thing is that if I come over here and select seconds and say write expression, and then I can choose seconds here again, is it going to change it from zero to zero or is it going to change from zero to six? Right. Let's understand that. Okay. So I'm going to close this up and restart this prototype all over again. And let's see what happens. So six five, four, three, two, one, zero changes the state. When I click on it, it actually changes it from zero to zero, right? 
And so which means that we have to come over here and change it from seconds to six seconds over here. So from seconds, I need to change that to six. Okay, now let's see if that works. So five, four, three, two, one, zero, changes the state. I click on it and it starts all over again. And this is exactly the behavior that we want. So I'm gonna click on this again and it resets. Now, one tiny problem here is that when I come over here and I'm changing the number uh, actually over here, uh, when I'm changing the number here to six, we're doing a little bit of this manual work, right? Because in the future, if we decide for some reason we want to have a bigger number because we're testing things out, let's say we want it to be 20, right? We want to have like a source of truth where I can just change the number directly rather than coming over here and changing it, right? Because I don't know, there are too many interactions and you know, too many numbers, right? So it won't, it'll be very hard for me to figure out what is going wrong. So instead of adding this number manually over here, what I can do is and I can add a variable itself and we can change everything in the variables if we have to, right? So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to say seconds. And what I will do here is I'm gonna say default seconds. Okay. And here, this is going to be our main number, right? This is going to be, let's say we make this 10. Okay. And then I'm going to have another variable, which is called the reset seconds. Okay. And I'm going to set this to 10. So in the future, when we want to come and change the number, we can change this over here and change this over here. And the interaction will work automatically as it is supposed to, right? So let's check that out. So I'm going to come over here and um, in this prototype, um, instead of changing it from default seconds, which is the original seconds to six. Okay. Now, as you can see, we've actually changed it to 10, but then we have to come here and manually change it to 10, right? Now we don't want that. That's the whole point. So instead of changing it manually to six over here, I'm going to go ahead and choose this thing called reset seconds and the value of reset seconds is 10. Okay. So now what that means is if I come over here and test this out, you can see it goes from nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero resets, click on this and then starts all over again from 10. Right. And if I want, to in the future, I want to change it from 10 seconds to maybe 15 seconds. I always, I just have to come here and change it to 15 and 15 and it's going to work, right? So that's exactly how you want to set up variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, cut that and paste that in all the places where we want to. So I'm going to paste that over here, over here, over here, uh, and over here as well, right? So four places. So now let's go ahead and just test the prototype and see if it works. So there we go. Um, I'm going to shrink this down a bit so we can see things. Okay. So I'm going to enter a phone number. Just going to enter a random phone number. Click on send code. There we go. And over here. So now the interesting thing here is that I can start typing things, you know, at the same time when this is going on, right? So as this is being counting down, I can type on it. And that's exactly how the behavior is supposed to work. And I can click on recent code and that's just going to reset the entire thing for us. And uh, the, that's about it, right? It's, it's like super, super, super simple. Right, so that's how you go ahead and create the timer component. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye.